select the first drawer the one we did earlier then it's going to be very hard to um, duplicate it and try to get it down here to fit the space that the, drop, the cupboard has for it so let's go to it there oh sorry let me turn on my um screencast case so you see what i'm pressing so the best the best way to do this is to go into front photographic view by clicking on your numpad one then duplicate this and move it along the z axis so while moving it down click and hold on control to snap it to the edge so in that way when you come here even to the side view you see that it's properly aligned very well so that's the same thing do it for the next one shift d z hold control and then snap it all right so now we have that but from references you you're going to see that if this is animated with g along the y axis if it is being pulled out in real life it has something that holds it from going much further inside the cupboard from here to create that particular thing you have to click on the cupboard go to edit mode and then make sure you're in face select mode click on it then duplicate it then right click to undo the movement and click p to separate by selection then go to object mode click again to select the part that you just separated and then right click to set the origin to be at the center of the geometry you've already been told if this is to rotate along the z axis it is not rotated around itself so you need to set the origin to be in the middle of itself and you can only do that by clicking on it and then right click to set the origin and click origin to geometry that will move the origin to the center of the geometry so now you click on r and in z it's rotating around itself after doing this make sure you come into the face mode and try as much as possible to scale it to fit this line all right scale it to fit this line let's go to edit mode and change it to edge select mode to select this edge and move it in z axis hold on control is it yeah so do the same thing here to so decide g but in x axis hold your control to cover it just to snap it to the right um, place and do the same thing here all right we now see that we don't have enough space here we need to divide this place with the bottom edge all right so let's do this and uh, go into front selection mode and g and in z you don't need to use the controls here so let it be just around here so now this is what we have and it is very flat so what we need we need to add the solidify modifier to give it thickness all right so now we have something like this you always make sure you check um, your scale so you know if your scale are uniform because it's always going to affect your modifiers so now our scale is in uniform Let's come back here and move this in Z axis, move it down to snap to the last bottom there and let's do it again to keep it at the center. Alright. Now we have this on even space so we can just eyeball it by moving it along the Z axis. We can get away with that. All right, this is cool. Also in the reference, um, this doesn't look so real because um, the tabletop is supposed to have much length and breadth to cover the sides of the table and also to cover this drawer edge. So what to do is just click on this and scale it a little while holding down shift. All right, and this should do. The next thing we are going to model is the handler or the holder, something that enables you to pull out this with the drawer. And we are going to talk about this it's a nice thing to organize your outliner so that you'll be able to locate any mesh you want to locate. This is supposed to go with the name tabletop or table underscore top. Anyhow you want to rename it, but make sure you rename it in a way that you're going to remember. So right now, the name for it is the base mesh we started off with, which is cube. So any other thing we've added, which is also through the cube, we we'll have this suffix cube dot zero zero one cube dot zero zero two and in that direction so to rename this click on it and click f2 and the object name will pop up 
so what you have to do here is just to rename it the way you want it let's say we need to call this the tabletop now it goes to the bottom of the outline under this collection all right so this collection is like a folder it helps you organize your outliner so if you click on this it's going to close the list of meshes inside it so click on it back again so you can see your meshes all right here let's rename this click on f2 and let's call these table sites just on random names let's call this table cupboard i think there's a difference between cupboard and drawer i don't know actually what this is called i don't know if it's cabinet or let's just give it cupboard because now it doesn't matter table back and then this is the drawer cover let's call let's rename this drawer cover drawer cover and this drawer cover one drawer cover two now let's hide this so we can select main drawers inside and we can hide with h as you most of you have already known so let's click on this and rename it drawer one drawer two drawer three so to bring back the drawer covers you can simply do that by clicking alt and h and to bring back any hidden mesh in your viewports all right let's move on with the parenting parenting is the art of giving a control of one mesh over to another mesh in such a way that moving mesh b will affect the position of mesh a for instance a lollipop the head of a lollipop that's where you lick is the child object of the stick where you hold so just just a basic explanation of a mesh like if you want to model that lollipop right now let me make the explanation clear for instance all right let's say for example this is a lollipop and you finish modeling this and you want your character to have this close to his or her mouth all right so if your character gets hold of this cylinder which is the holder and while animating you click on g to move it you expect it to move with the sweets but if we move it now it's not going to move why is this happening because we've not parented the sweets to the stick which is the holder so the best way to do this is to select the child mesh and select the one you want to be the parent and that's going to be the active object you can see it now with this yellow outline the active one is the one with the yellow outline which is the last selected object and then click on ctrl p and this node will come out set parent to object keep transform but amongst the two you can go with any one so basically you go with object keep transform so now if you move the stick it moves with the switch if you rotate it they both rotate together so that's just it that's the same thing here you can do away with that for now that's the same thing here in this cupboard if we move this drawer cover along the y-axis it doesn't move with the main drawer and you need to have a nice parenting hierarchy so all your objects can move together like it's supposed to be in real life all right so to select the drawer you can you can double click on this particular aspect but most times you are going to be confused so the best thing to do is after renaming it you go to your outliner click on the drawer drawer one which is what you want to parent to the first drawer cover and hold control and click on the drawer cover and it's now selected then you click on p and choose objects keep transform so now if you click on the drawer cover and move it along y axis it comes out with the drawer simple as that so you need to do this for the rest of the drawer and its drawer cover click on drawer 2 and then hold control and click on drawer cover 1 then move your mouse to the viewport and click ctrl p and choose objects keep transform and do the same thing for drawer 3 and ctrl and click on drawer cover 1 all right so we now have all our drawers in place nice so to move this nothing is moving with it so it will be this will be a nice time to do the parenting so click on the table side which are the table legs and parent it to the tabletop keep transform do the same thing for the table back ctrl p keep transform so now if you move this it moves alongside with the table back which is the cover and then the table side right click on it to do that so now the next thing to do is parent everything to the tabletop all right because in real life if you lift a table from the top it's going to move along with the cabinet and every other thing it comes with so click on this cupboard parent it to the tabletop so it moves all right so now click on this ones also parent it to the tabletop so everything can move together 
all right okay now we can move on to creating a cupboard handler and here i'm going to create only one so um you did the rest of the two just duplicate and keep it in position all right so i will not be wasting much of the time how to create this you need to start with an object that is closer to what you want to model and i'm going to start mine with a cylinder and once you add any object in blender without touching the object or rotating it or grabbing it to move it from the position it comes in at default you have this option down here and here you can do a lot of things you can work with the vertices depending on the mesh you've introduced into the viewport you can work on the radius and the depth and a lot of other stuff but if you just move this you're not going to have that option again let's add it back so we can move on add the cylinder and then give it 16 vertices to add the drawer holder or the drawer handle make a shift a and click on shift a and add a cylinder rotate the cylinder along the y-axis at 90 degrees if you start applying the scale at the x-axis which is supposed to go this way which is supposed to go this way it's going the other way around why is it like this it's simply because we've not applied this rotation all right so just as the same way we apply scale just click on it and click on ctrl a and apply the rotation so now if you scale it along the x axis it moves along so now you use these digits because i actually um, took a measurement of my reference 0.4 along the x axis and 0.01 along the y and 0.01 along the z so now you're gonna have something like this let's go to top view and move it almost um, ahead of the table all right this so this is what we're going to have but this is not going to be this its final position bring it down make sure you apply the scale so you can have this uniformity and no no issues when you add any modifier to it apply the subsurface modifier you can keep it at two here to further smoothing it then you're going to have stuff like this then to do away with this enable the first select mode and bevel this you can increase the bevel by using your scroll mouse you can click on this to insert it and she's smooth to have this smooth transition from the body to the side face and before this can work very well you also need a mirror modifier okay so add a loop cut at the center i'm going to front mode and then the x-ray mode be inverted select mode to select this part of it and then click on x to delete the vertices and you'll be only left with this other side add a mirror modifier to now mirror it to the next axis and enable clipping so now you see that the right and the left side are now the same okay so now let's bring in something that connects the handler to the drawer cover add a loop cut here and move it to this place be in edge select mode by clicking to move closer and then bevel this it's nice to have just one segment of the bevel all right this will do now let's move it to the edge select mode add another loop cut at the center because we need we need square faces in order to make what we want to make let's scale it along the x axis all right i think these faces are square enough so click on these faces four faces and what we want to do is to convert this selection to a circle click on x but this time around we are not deleting it we are only going to dissolve these faces which will match all these four faces into one and what else do you want to do here we want to make this face and you can do that by coming up here to mesh transform and to sphere when you click on it you now have this number at the top right sorry at the top left and you see if you increase it all the way to one you're going to have something closer to a sphere and that is all we need here all right and there's a short key for that you can also use shift alt s and then click on one on your numpad to make it a sphere now make sure you draw your mouse till the face is completely round or click one after pressing shift alt s what you need to do here again is to insert this face all right and then extrude it along the y direction while extruding it you see some abnormalities in this face why is it like this it's because of the direction of the normals of the faces we transform to a sphere and to do away with this 
you click on scale which is the s y and zero to make it a flat phrase then still move it along the y axis at this point it will be necessary to go back to the other view so you see where this is going to intersect and keep on moving it to the other point almost here if you're okay with this distance between the drawer holder and the draw cover you go back to the local view mode you have to insert this face so as to be able to have this plain neatness over there then also add a loop cut to tighten up these edges add a loop cut here to tighten up this edge you also need another loop cut here to tidy up this edge cut because it feels some you need to adjust this to be a little bit inside and come to the front mode to front orthographic view and align the position select it and eyeball this position to almost be at the center of the drawer cover right then what you should do also is click on this then hold shift and click on this and parent it so now if you move this along the y axis it also moves along with it and another tip about parenting if you parented object b to object a and then you parent the object b again to object c object a is no more the parent of object b the new parent is object c so whenever you move a after those operations b will not move with it if you move c b will move with it so to explain that further, previously we parented the drawer cover to the tabletop and then if you move the tabletop, all other parts will move with it and the drawer cover too will move with it. But since we introduced this drawer cover holder and parented the drawer cover to the drawer cover holder, the drawer cover holder has the right to now move the drawer cover and the main drawer. Okay, so now to make it go back to normal, click on the drawer cover holder and then shift click on the tabletop and parent it. So now if you move the parent top, the tabletop, everything follows along. So just do this and then in the next tutorial, we are going to round off modeling this table. And I'm going to show you two ways of making the drawer cover 2 and drawer cover 3 holders. Alright, please guys, stay put. See you in the next tutorial. Thank you.